All right, so let's talk about our basic fire missions. Okay, so on our M16 plotting board, we have three types of firing charts. We have our observed firing chart, our modified observed firing chart, and our surveyed firing chart. All right, today I'll be talking about our observed firing chart, specifically our pivot point method. All right, so in your observed firing chart, you have pivot point below pivot point. Um, today I'll be covering our pivot point method. All right, there's a couple things that you need in order to prepare your, your plotting board for pivot point. Now, first is your range from your mortar firing position to your target. Second, you need your direction of fire. All that is, is your azimuth from your position at the mortar firing point to the target. Now, usually those are obtained by just plotting your mortar firing position grid and your target grid on a map and then determining your grid azimuth and range. All right, so we determined our range for pivot point, your range cannot exceed 2,900. Okay, so if your range exceeds 2,900, from you to the target, you need to drop and use your below pivot point method. So once we have determined our direction of fire, so our azimuth and our range, we're going to index that direction of fire on our plotting board. All right, so I'll give an example of a direction of fire or an azimuth of 5660. Okay, so I'm going to index that azimuth on my plotting board of 5660. All right, once I have that, all I'm going to do is from my pivot point, I'm going to go up on my vertical center line with my range scale to where I get to 27 because I determined my range to target to be 2700 meters. Okay, so I'm gonna go up to the 27 on that vertical center line, and I'm gonna make a point. Now I'm going to circle that point, and I can label it with a one. Now if you remember from my M16 plotting board orientation class, uh, I said that you should use a mechanical pencil on your plotting boards. All right, so I'm just using a map pen, a map marker, um, just so you can see it on my screen here. Okay, now that I have my azimuth indexed at 5660, I have my plot at my range to target of 2700. Now I need to superimpose my referred deflection scale in order to obtain my chart data. Okay, so all I'm going to do is first determine what my mounting azimuth is. How we compute or determine our mounting azimuth is rounding our direction of fire, that azimuth from the map, to the nearest 50 mils, nearest five zero mils. Now normal rounding rules apply. Obtaining our mounting azimuth, so for example, zero to 24, I'm going to round to zero. 25 to 74, I'm going to round to 50, and then 75 to 99, I'm rounding to 100, okay? So I'll, I'll provide a few examples of what I mean by this. So say I have a direction of fire of 3,200, okay? An azimuth of 3,200. Because that falls to the nearest 100, or the nearest 50, my mounting azimuth will be the same. So I'll have a mounting azimuth of 3,200. Now let's say I have a direction of fire of 1,625. All right, I need to round that 2,5 to the nearest 50. So that would give me a mounting azimuth of 1,650. All right, now coming back to my scenario on the board, 
I said I had a, an azimuth or direction of fire of 5660. So I'm going to round that to the nearest 50 to get a mounting azimuth of 5650. Now, keeping my direction of fire indexed on my plotting board, I'm going to simply superimpose my refer deflection scale onto my board. Now, in my example, I'll have a refer deflection of 2800. So I'm going to superimpose 28 on my mounting azimuth of 5650. And then in just, just like I described in my orientation class, I'm going 400 mils to the left, 400 mils to the right. And then we're utilizing Lars as we're dealing with deflection. So left add. Right, subtract. All right, so I have 400 mils to the left and to the right. Now all I have to do is obtain my chart data. Okay? This part's easy because all I have to do is read the data I already have indexed. I have my direction of fire indexed. Therefore, I can read my deflection. So index right now, I have a chart deflection of 2790. I already determined my range to target to be 2700. So my initial chart range is going to be 2700. I already have my initial azimuth, so I can go ahead and fill it in my computer's record. And then all I need to do is obtain my charge, elevation, and time of flight in my tabular firing table. Okay, so I've entered my tabular firing table. All right, some things to note. We always want to utilize the lowest charge. And I say this because it gives us the, abil the ability to prevent enemy detection of your position. All right, it may prevent exposing your position to counter mortar fire. It allows you to have a higher sustained rate of fire and it re reduces your overall time of flight. So the lower the charge, the less time that flight or that round will be flying in the air. Okay, so you obtained your data in your tabular firing table, your TFT. Now let's say in this case, so I'm firing a grid mission. Um, let's say I'm just firing a, a standard fire for effect. All right, so. My mortar to fire, I have as a section, um, they're firing HE quick, and let's say our unit SOP or fire for effect is four rounds, okay? So I already have my chart data. I obtained my information out of my TFT. I went ahead and filled out my initial fire command and I pass that to the gun line. Now the gun line applies that data to their site unit and they're going to they're going to fire those rounds. Now I said we have a section firing four rounds. So that's going to give us a total of 16 rounds fired. So because it was a fire for effect mission, the observer comes back and he says, end of mission, he gives your battle de damage assessment, your BDA. Or right, say we want to utilize this 
for future missions. All we're going to do is erase that circle in our number one, keeping our initial plot because we did not have any corrections. And we're going to label this with a hollow cross. Right, so by definition, your hollow cross from your plot should be 20 meters away. And then the legs of your hollow cross should be 80 meters. Now I've made mine larger than that, just so you can see what it's supposed to look like. And then we're going to label it with the target number associated with this target. Now, my target number was Charlie Hotel 0001. And then if I have an altitude to that target, I would go ahead and label it in my bottom left corner. Okay, so your target number goes in your top right. And then your target altitude goes in your bottom left. So then I just conducted an observed firing chart pivot point method. All I needed was my range to my target. Okay. So I plotted my target, my mortar firing position on my map. I obtained my range from my mortaring, my mortar position to the target. I got my direction of fire, which was my azimuth. From there, I indexed my azimuth. So in this case it was 5660. Once I indexed that azimuth from my pivot point, I went up to the range I determined off my map. 2700 meters and I made my plot. All right, I circled it and I labeled it with a one. Now from there, I superimposed my referred deflection scale on my plotting board. Okay, so I have my referred deflection I went with 2800. And I went 400 mils to the left and right. Once I have my Refer deflection superimposed on my plotting board. I can obtain my chart data. So I can go ahead. Keeping my direction of fire indexed, I'm going to read off my initial chart deflection. So I had in this case was 2790. And we already determined our range from our map, so that doesn't change. So that gives us a initial chart range of 2,700 meters. All right, once I had that, I can go ahead and move into my firing table, my tabular firing table, TFT, to get my charge elevation and time of flight. Remember, try to utilize the lowest charge as much as possible. And then once I have that information, I can go ahead and fill out my initial fire command and pass that to the gun line. Okay, so real quick, for refer deflection, um, it's not something I've covered so far. But your refer deflection can be any 100 mil deflection um, from zero to 6,300, okay? So as long as it falls within that 100 mil deflection, you can have it as a referred deflection. The only thing is you need to ensure that your mortars can place out their aiming posts on that same deflection, all right? So normally your refer deflection is used at 2,800. Um, People also have it 
at 32. Or if you're trying to go to the rear, you have a referred deflection of 0, 0700. 0, 0. All right. The biggest thing you need to keep in mind here is if you're trying to use something other than you know, 28 or 0, 07, you need to have a deflection that does not cause sight block of one or more of your, your mortar systems, okay? If you do have sight block or barrel mass, you can place an alternate direction assist to mitigate that sight block. All right, so that's just real quick. Your refer deflection does not have to be 2800, but it has to be for the ease of deflections, any 100 mil deflection from zero to 63. You just need to be able to place your mortars on that same deflection on their aiming posts. Okay, so if you have any questions over observed firing chart, pivot point method, please reach out to me. Either leave a comment on this video, DM me on Instagram, or comment on my post.